Now you're telling me it was that easy to get Zelda Tears of the Kingdom to run in 4K? That freaking cheap and that freaking easy? Come on, Nintendo. Plus, we're talking about two new games announced, the return of the Wii U online services and the best price ever for a Switch Lite. So good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate all of you, and I hope your day is going good, and I can make it a little bit better. Let's kick it off with the two new announcements, two fun games that just got revealed for Switch. The first one is about being a dinosaur in an Animal Crossing universe. Now, I love that you get to create your own paleo folk and then run your own shop. We've seen both of these elements done in games before, like make a character and explore and make friends and build out your island. And we've also seen run a shop. Them together isn't really that unique either, but it does seem like this is a quality game. I trust Team 17 as a publisher. It's coming out later this year and Amber Isles does seem like it is going to be a fun, hybrid Animal Crossing shopkeeper type game and as we eagerly await the next Animal Crossing this definitely could be one to keep your eyes on and that could keep you satiated while we wait for Nintendo to uh, release a new console then wait a few years then drop Animal Crossing next gen edition. The other game is Dice Folk which is already out on Steam and this appeals to me because I am a big fan of dice and cards. I love me some card games, I love me some dice games. I find just the combat to be very engaging. And Dice Folk takes things to a new level by allowing you to control both teams, your hero team and the enemy team. I'm not sure exactly how that works out, but it does have very positive reviews on Steam. It's coming later this year to Switch, and I definitely will be checking it out. Just two small indie games that will be hitting the eShop, but I thought they were worth talking about because they both appealed to me in terms of their genres, and they look like they're quality products fusing different mechanics together. Even if they're not wholly unique, hopefully they can be unique in terms of their quality and their ability to keep us enjoying. Now, I thought the Wii U and the 3DS were done so. Nintendo has officially shuttered them. They are offline, and yes, you can download your already downloaded games, yada yada. Of course, you can play anything that you have a disc for. You can play anything in real life space with people, but you can't do online multiplayer. Unless the Pretendo Network comes online. Now, Pretendo Network is the name of a new effort being spearheaded by a team of fans and software developers to allow players to experience Wii U and 3DS games online once more. Now, this Pretendo Network has existed in some capacity previously, but it did require a hacked Wii U. And now that the Wii U is offline, it's not required to have a hacked Wii U. You can just access this. So it does seem like they are going to be moving this project along. They've got a full progress report online if you want to see what games and services they have brought back from the grave. They are trying to resurrect an era that was just snatched from us. Now, I don't know if Nintendo will go after them. It's a bit different than the Switch where they're aggressively pursuing those who try to emulate Switch games because the Switch is current. They're selling Switch games. There's a lot of money invested and involved with those efforts. But with the Wii U and the 3DS, how many games are they selling? The online wasn't even something you could pay for. I don't know that they care so much about this. It might be that Pretendo Network is able to keep the last generation of Nintendo console and handheld alive for longer, which I think is a good thing. As long as they're not subverting anything that Nintendo has set in place, which now they're not because Nintendo has said we're done with online, it's just introducing an alternative way for you to experience these games. And as you know, as it's discussed constantly in our industry, things go offline and things vanish. And these games that maybe you loved as a kid or you want to show your kids or you just want to play again, a lot of times it's hard to access. And if something like the Pretendo Network can make that doable and easy and free, like, I'm kind of all for it. Especially now that Nintendo has officially taken it offline. This isn't a case of Pretendo trying to come in and say, hey, instead of paying for Switch Online, do us. No, there's no other option. And when there's no other alternative, like this shouldn't be that big of a deal and hopefully Nintendo doesn't try to squash what I think is a super cool project. Let me know if you would be down to play 3DS or Wii U again if it comes back up on the Pretendo network. Now I probably should have led with this because it is something that will run out and hundreds have already sold but Walmart does have the Timmy and Tommy Animal Crossing Teal Switch Lite bundle for $179. That's freaking great, okay? It comes with Animal Crossing New Horizons 
and it comes with a Switch Lite. So effectively, $179 minus a $60 game, you are paying $119 for a Switch Lite. Sub $150 to get in on the Switch ecosystem in 2024 is phenomenal. I made a video earlier this year talking about how I think the Switch OLED is a great buy still in 2024, but getting the Switch Lite for that freaking cheap is insane. And I would recommend this to anybody that doesn't have a Switch. And even if you do have a Switch, gosh, I gotta be frugal here. I like having multiple Switches. I'm somebody that bought the Pikachu 3DS and the Zelda 3DS, and I love having, you know, different cool systems. But if you do have 179 spare dollars, like this is a pretty sick bundle and a way to get a portable only Switch that's really a cool, I think, form factor and has a nice D-pad and doesn't get drift. Like it, I don't know, don't buy it, but maybe. Uh, this will sell out, I'm sure, on Walmart. So I'll put the link in the description down below if you're interested or want to hook up a friend or a nephew or a niece or a significant other or yourself, go for it. This is the best price I've ever seen for any type of Switch hardware like across the board. Oh, LED's obviously better, but a Switch Lite at 179. And then if you dink off the Animal Crossing to take it to 119, like, holy crap, Nintendo would never go that low retail, but this deal makes it possible. Got a little bone to pick here with the big end because I found this article and this new information to be damning and telling. All right, we know that Nintendo cheaps out on hardware. Like, no offense, they have great gimmicks, they innovate amazingly well, but they do, on the hardware side, love to go as bare bones as possible. The Switch is an underpowered system. It came out as an underpowered system, and to this day, it is even more so an underpowered system. Well, somebody went and modded a Nintendo Switch OLED to be able to run Zelda Tears of the Kingdom at 4K. So this user named Naga desoldered the console's 4GB of RAM and put in 8GB of RAM. So he effectively doubled the amount of RAM on the Switch, taking off 4 and adding 8. Now, some games were hard capped to 4 and did not see any improvement, but games like Mortal Kombat 1, Kingdom Come Deliverance, and Alien Isolation ran much better, much smoother, and Zelda TOTK was able to run at 4K. Now, the caveat here is because this is like happening, sort of like jumping through weird hoops and around the bend, it didn't play playable. Like, it ran 4K, but the performance was really, really bad. But what this does show you is that had Nintendo initially gone with 8 gigs of RAM instead of 4 with the Switch, or even just with the Switch OLED, we would have been in a position to have far better performance. And the debate that goes on is, how much would this really have cost Nintendo? At the time of its inception, either 2017 for the OG Switch, or 2022 for the Switch OLED, would four more gigabytes of RAM really cost them that much? And I've seen a lot of users and players say like, no, it would not have. It would have been a small upgrade for Nintendo's pockets, but a massive upgrade for our experience. And it's very interesting because if you consider a Switch OLED that would have eight gigabytes of RAM, that could run some games in 4K, that could allow games and third-party ports to perform better, would Nintendo be in a slightly different position? I have to tell you, my honest opinion is no. I don't think the Switch sells more or less based on its performance. I think it sells more or less based on its library and just its absolute explosion across the global scene. And with 4 gigabytes of RAM versus 8 gigabytes of RAM, I don't think you see a huge uptick. But what you do see an uptick of is our experience and the hardcore Nintendo fans enjoying this more. Yet at the same time, it's very sneaky of Nintendo because by artificially limiting the strength of their system, it allows them to artificially limit the strength of the next system, so on and so forth, and keep us in this loop where we are excited for eight gigabytes of RAM when we probably should have already had it. Now, maybe that's a little bit of a downer glass half empty view of the situation, but I think it's sound. I think Nintendo does intentionally underpower their hardware to save money and to make sure that that is not an emphasis point for their system. Does Nintendo have the brains and the dollars to make a top tier system? Absolutely. Does Nintendo want to keep their system at a reasonable price point and more importantly, keep their profits insanely high? Yes, they do. But it makes you wonder, like what if they had put eight gigabytes of RAM into the Switch OLED and delivered a really great experience that for the last three or so years, we could have had a stronger, better lineup of games in terms of performance and even some 4K access. But I'd argue that the reason Nintendo did not do this 
might have just as much to do with their cheapness and their greed as it does with the next Switch console. What are they going to do to distinguish the next Switch? Could they introduce a cool new gimmick, make the Joy-Con drift-proof, improve the hardware? I think the biggest thing that people want out of a Switch 2 is improved hardware, and if you went ahead and did that with the Switch OLED, it really dilutes what the Switch 2 is doing different. Now, if you want to get really conspiracy theory crazy here, you could go back to 2021 when the Switch OLED came out, and that summer it was rumored that the Switch Pro was going to drop, and we thought that was going to be Nintendo's more powered 4K capable system. And then it was rumored that due to supply issues, due to chip shortages, and due to cost during the pandemic, Nintendo audibled and opted to launch a Switch OLED versus launching a Switch Pro. At that point, they probably had a decision to make. We could make the Switch OLED more powerful, but then that means diminishing returns on the eventual Switch Pro or the Switch 2. So maybe Nintendo did intentionally limit the Switch OLED and not put in that extra RAM, even though it was doable, feasible, and not that expensive because they wanted to make you hunger for a Switch 2 even more. Either way, I think it's interesting that just a little bit more RAM makes the Switch go burr so much more. And I do wish that we'd been experiencing that for the last three years, but by golly, show us the Switch 2 and show us that it has at least eight gigs of RAM and can do more. Although at this point, knowing how much four gigabytes does extra for the Switch, I hope that the next Switch really does push the RAM, but I doubt it. This is a very interesting modification that Naga made. And even though Zelda cannot run, remember it's not optimized for that, but it is able to put out a 4K resolution, which shows that if Nintendo did take that into consideration, they probably could have made Tears of the Kingdom look absolutely stunning and run very well on a Switch OLED with eight gigabytes of RAM. But let me know your take in the comments down below and let me know if you're interested in either Amber Isle or Dice Folk, the two new games we discussed today. Are you gonna hop on board the Pretendo network when it goes online? And are you excited? For whatever the heck news new is coming because um nothing is coming except for paper mario and luigi's mansion 2 as of this moment anyways thanks so much for watching everybody stay safe stay healthy stay happy stay positive out there i love you lots switch force out